Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office at Teardown Lab. I was literally just playing I Am Bread, and it reminded me of this project that I need to do. And this is my toaster, and it's ah currently dropping bloody breadcrumbs all over me. And you can see it's a digital one, if I turn off the light. Um, one side of it stopped working. It is looking a bit funky, but it's over, over like 15 years old. Um, so the right hand side's working and the left hand side isn't. And what you're hearing here is the automatic basket retract going up and down. So what I suspect they did, they've duplicated the same chassis basically. It probably made this as a two slice and then they've just doubled it up. So that way you can have one side sort of go down and the other side still be alive. And mm, it smells really toasty here. And I've got a little hoover next to me, a little vacuum cleaner, because no matter how much you shake these out, you can see there, oh, there's just more of it. It's endless supply of bloody crumbs. So the first thing I have to do is get into it. And now this is not so easy because it does use a type of security screw. So I'm gonna to have to go find some security bits and hopefully I've got one that'll fit that. In fact, let me have just the quickest look because I do have a little set here and I could just get lucky. Oh, oh hello, I think I am lucky because it does look a bit like one of these. We'll just try that. Wow, it smells toasty. <laughs> it's a toastastic smell. So that was convenient. I wasn't really, I have to admit, I really wasn't expecting to actually have a security bit so easily on hand. I'm going to be a bit careful with it because if you strip this down, it's going to be a right problem. So I'm really hoping as well that it doesn't have some of these security bits under the rear feet. Because I can only see some at the front, but they are. Uh, tell you what, it goes all around the chassis. Let me meet you back here in a moment after I've removed them because it's going to take ages. That was somewhat painful, but I feel it'll be worth it in the end. So the lid is coming off, but electronics. Oh my life, is there toast everywhere. It's like a crumbly bumbly, jiggly piggly, messy wessy, pile of toast. Right, got the front panel off. We'll have a look at the front panel momentarily. <laughs> wow, we look at this thing. It's like a battleship, absolutely like a battleship, full of crumbs, of course. And check this out. There's like a big lump of crazy toasty crunchiness everywhere so literally you've got PCB here that's absolutely covered in breadcrumbs but what's really cool you can see here these are actually the motors that drive the uh, bread carriages up and down it's like some sort of worm gear so I think what I'll need to do is just vacuum clean everything and then start having a look closer look at the board to see if there's anything we can sort of diagnose here You can see the board is now in bits. It's actually alive. And what's fascinating by this, it's all made by Yorkwell. It's a Yorkwell, where is it? A Yorkwell TT24. And it's designed in such a way, it's almost certainly designed as a single, like two slice toaster or four slice because these boards are totally separate. I could cut the PCB here down the middle and it would still function because they are two separate boards. I've checked it out on the back. Um, this side is working, you can see the LED is on, this side is not. So I've managed to figure out though, while I was off, off air as it were, I went between pins 1 and 3 and I can see 3.82 volts, which I'm kind of guessing is the logic level voltage hopefully, and I'm just going to check the other pins while I'm at it. Oh, I think I saw a 4 volts too, let's see, no, that, that's assuming I've got ground in the right place. Okay, so I'm just going to go between pins one and three on this side as well. And I'm not seeing anything. So that would indicate that perhaps there's no power coming from the transformer to this board. So what I could do as a little test, and I might regret this, but we're not going to run the board, is to jump a wire across, just a power wire. So the reason you don't really want to do this is because, of course, you could overload the transistors, sorry, the transformer. <laughs> as well the transformers that you've got on the uh, unit 
and we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we don't make this any worse. And if you are playing with these at home, be very careful because there are live mains contacts here on this side of the board. It's going to be electrifying to you. So I'm going to go from pin three on the left hand side here to pin three on this side. Hmm, still nothing, nothing. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to rearrange everything and check it out. Do, 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 I want to. Hey. That was the most annoying removal process in the world. So, because we put the board in both ways, this board. So when it was when it was active and in the kitchen, it was using this side, and that was working fine. And then when we tried it on the bench, we turned it around and plugged this in. And so we was using this board, the left hand side. So both of these things actually work. So it could only be down to power basically for that side of the circuit. So I thought I'd take the PCB out to see if there was any uh, obvious signs of damage, you know, tracking burn, you know, something where a bit of errant toast has fallen in here and that bread has basically shorted out the system like a bug. But so far, nothing yet. I've got my meter set up, so the board is now hot. I'm going to be very careful. So looking at the other side, you've got the two transformers, one here and one on this side of the board. So I'm just looking for its primary and secondary. And I suspect its primary is this one, this massive track, which is coming from the mains coming in. Uh, and if that's the mains coming in, you can see there's a big separation between all of the PCBs. And then on this side, you've got probably the neutral. In fact, I'm pretty certain it's the neutral because it's the other track with the extra layer of tinning to give it that extra bit of thickness. So let's have a check. So we've got 230 volts here on the primary. And this is the working side, by the way. And this is secondary has 7.25 volts. So then the primary on the left hand side is clearly 230 volts. And the secondary is nada. So it's that component. So we're going to extract that after we turn everything off. We've got the front panel display plugged in now, both sides. We've jumpered the transformer from this side so it goes into the rectifier on the other side as well. And everything is ready to be plugged in. So fingers crossed we do not blow out the other original transformer. Oh! We have two motors motoring. And they're going to continue motoring till they reach their end stop. Oh, there we go. Or till they just give up. So that. <laughs> just smelling it. So you can see just about. I'm going to be a bit wary and turn this a bit gingerly, but there you go. So you can probably just about see the LEDs there running. If I push that side. Okay, well, it's going to keep going for a long time because it's never going to reach the end stops. Until I uh, pretend it has. There you go, well done, you've reached the end. Um, yeah, so that has kind of worked. Kinda, right? So you have to remember though, the manufacturer chose to put ex spend extra money on this design and just keep the two. It might well be because they just had an existing design and doubling up seemed simpler, or genuinely it needs the current that only two of these can provide. So I will be trying to source another one of these. Will I go back to how it was though? Probably not, I'll probably just leave it like this for now because if I'm gonna find one of these, I'll easily be able to find two of these and I'll just swap these out if they're the weak point. So that is my jewelry rig toaster right now. But I think we're gonna be we're gonna be okay with it. 
I will uh, just tell the family not to engage the motor drives at the same time. That will give it the, the full benefit of the doubt. But frankly, if it's able to chooch the relays along, it's probably everything else in terms of high current activity is handled by the actual... Um, I was going to say it's... Uh, yeah, I've worked out what's going on here. Um, <laughs> you can see the motors actually have an H bridge and the motors are being driven by that. So if you did have a particularly heavy piece of toast, maybe maybe you could blow out your power supply. Hmm. Well, I'll see how it goes. How about that? See how it goes. As ever. Okay, so here's the thing. It didn't feel right bagging this up only to either have it fail in a little while or um, you know, me having to open it again, frankly, to get in there. It's over 10 years old, so I'd like to, to just not have to touch it for another 10 years. So I found this Binatone AC adapter which outputs an annoying 9 volts at 300 milliamps AC. So this is one of those things, that, a death adapter. Having something with an AC output in your house is always going to cause you trouble, especially a Binatone piece of crap. Because if you plug this into something, it's going to blow its ass out. So I basically just cut this out, smashed it up with a hammer a few times till it gave way. And that's it there. It is actually live. I don't want to like mess with it too much. Um, it has a slightly brighter LED than I remember it, and that's because um, if you measure the uh, existing regulated side, it's coming in at 3.75 volts, but on our new side, it's coming around 4. But I think that's kind of within tolerance, to be fair, right? You could be running this at, you know, 220 volts to 240 volts inputs. I think that's within the sort of typical swing. I think that's uh, adequate. So now when we run the motors, though, you can hear it sounds powerful. Yes. So I think that's good. The only thing I've got to do though, which is the really tricky part, <laughs> LED still glowing even though they're unplugged. Hmm. It kind of feels like a capacitor waiting to sort of spam you. But basically, the issue I'm going to have is to mount our new transformer. So it's all very well just picking up a massive random transformer like that from somewhere but you need to make sure that electrically it's good and of course that it still fits within the confines of your enclosure so that's something that I may or may not be able to solve um, and it's going to probably take some swearing and some manipulations and resins and glues all sorts of things to make that fit and of course this is a leaded contraption it's not PCB mount so I'm trying to like now, for example, display the legs. I want to maintain that separation. Um, maybe I could just uh, squidge it down on the blob of resin. But again, that's going to be my my cross to bear, as it were. So there. Now I feel we can conclude this video because I'm just going to shove this back in the box and I'm done. Thank you for watching. Wow, paper is not the material for this job. Magic moments. P 
Pop Day.